Hey, everybody, this is Birch. Um, there was a tweet, I don't know, somewhere, and it was it was good wisdom, but it was buried inside of a bunch of bullshit. Um, but the tweet was basically, you can't just copy manga. And it's an obvious statement, but there's depth to that. So, you know, backing up a bit, we're trying, you know, people are, are giving advice about how to solve comics, how to fix things, what should we do? And one of the realities of where the current industry is at is that manga has figured out a number of things to be successful. And you see manga um, selling a lot of copies, bringing in the dollars, and, and just doing a lot of good business here in the U.S. And the difference is that the content is not being produced here in the U.S. It's being produced in Japan, often you know, a year ago or more. And then it's being translated, kind of reprinted, regurgitated here in the U.S., in this kind of Tonkaban format. Now, by the way, if you ever go to Japan, and I recommend you do, one of the things you'll quickly notice is that what you perceive manga and Japanese comics and everything else like that, what you perceive of, of that in the U.S., however you're consuming it, if you're going to Barnes & Noble or you're ordering things on Amazon or however you're getting it, when you go to Japan, you'll notice it's different. And it feels both bigger and smaller simultaneously. The bigger is you go to like uh, the Shibuya Crossing. Uh, that is the area in Shibuya where you have kind of five corners. And uh, it's it's one. Of, if you watch any movie in Japan, they always include a, a clip of the Shibuya Crossing where lots and lots of people are like walking to cross the street in this one you know area, this one little intersection. Um, but there's a, a bookstore there that is uh, underneath the, well, Starbucks is part of it, but it's, it's kind of in one of the corners and the bottom, I want to say three floors are manga. Maybe it's more than that. And then the very, very bottom floor is uh, video games and the, you know, and there's music and other things there. But one of the things you'll notice is that the, the manga appears very kind of matter of fact. There's, there's walls and walls and walls and walls and walls of manga. And there's, there's like something like a hundred thousand manga just shoved into, you know, every corner of this thing. And, you know, you'll, you'll see people in there shopping, but you won't see like this horde of people. You won't see this like giant crowd. And the reason is there's, you know, the, the store you're in right there, the should be a crossing. There's, you know, 50 stores within half a mile that are exactly like this one. There's just so much of it. You go into the, uh, you know, the, the Shibuya station, you go over to Shinjuku, you go down to, you know, wherever you're going and you will find tons and tons of little like stores. You'll find people, you know, literally kind of with a blanket and, uh, and manga sitting there selling it just, just in the midst of all this craziness. It's so ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And so my, my feeling, and when I've had friends go over to Japan and look at this, they're like, wow, it's everywhere. And it's not as popular as I thought. And I'm like, how do you, how do you take that impression? It's like, well, when I go into the bookstore, it's not slammed with people. And if you go to Japan, especially if you're, um, you're riding kind of the, the train stay, if you're at the JR line, like at seven, eight o'clock at night, it is slammed with people there's a chance during the weekday you're going to be shoved into a train car, meaning literally somebody with their hands are going to shove you into the car because it's so packed. And so if you're living in that environment, when you go into a bookstore and it's not, you know, crowded to the point that you're smelling a lot of other body odor, you may think, you know, hey, this isn't, you know, that this isn't as popular. The reality is you got to kind of take a step back and realize that there's so much availability that you can get your hands on manga literally anywhere. And that's the, the true magic of what's going on. Um, but to, to get that in the U.S., uh, here's a statement that I saw passed around a lot. Is the, you know, the U.S. can't just do what manga does and expect to be successful. And it's, it's a weird statement. It's, a, it's kind of a deflection. But there's some truth to it. And the truth to it is, if you think about manga's popularity in Japan and how it became ubiquitous and how it was available everywhere, it's because there were 50 steps to get it from, you know, position zero, no momentum, to where it is today. And it's very much an American thing. I mean, I've, I've 
I think as anybody who's listened to the channel for a long time, I've traveled the world. I've lived in a lot of different places. I lived in Ireland. I've lived in you know Japan. I've lived all around the world. And it, you know, one time or another, for little periods of time, I have been to all seven continents. Actually, seven, even the Antarctica. That's the weird one. That's the bucket list one. But I've been all over the planet. And one of the things that is true is that you can't just become what another region is. There's like a million steps to get from where you are today to where that region is. So where manga is concerned, where comics are concerned, it's it's not an easy answer. And and keep in mind, I'll, I'll you know at this moment say, I love this country. I think America is a great country. I think a lot of people take it for granted. I think there's a lot of really cool things we have here. I think there's a lot of uh, people, you know, of both, of both by the way, of both pol- political parties, but more on the left, that typically will say things like, um, oh, you know, we should be more like Europe or we should be more like Asia or whatever it happens to be that we want to be more like. And they don't realize that if you travel to those countries and you actually live in those countries, like if you go to Japan, um, here's one of the, I love Japan. I love the culture. I love the people. I love the environment. I would happily retire and live the rest of my life in Japan. Happily. Um, why, you know, Mrs. Perch and I have talked about this many, many times. It's definitely something I would enjoy. Japan is super racist. Like you, 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 you should understand Japan is absolutely a racist country. If you are Chinese fucking forget about it. So, you know, what always, um, it irritates me. And and by the way, if you go to Europe, try going to France and then, uh, you know, seeing what people's opinions are of people from Portugal. Hell, I mean, go to Spain and ask what people's opinions are of Portugal. It's a nightmare. Like, if, if, if you think America is the only country that has racism, you are out of your goddamn mind. Like, there there is, all these problems exist everywhere. It is absolutely absolutely a fact um but where comics are concerned where manga is concerned there's a ton of things that america can learn from manga but you can't just look at the place it's at today and say we want to be that you actually have to take all the steps between today and where japan is and replicate a lot of those steps you know the the problem with I'm sure a lot of you listen to other channels and you listen to a lot of opinions and it's very easy to say, you know, hey, the SJW is woke, you know, blah, 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 blah. And and there's lots of, uh, I know of you, because I'll go on like thinking critical and I'll get people in the chat and I'll see people in the comments on my videos and other things that are like, we just need to get rid of, you know, the woke. If we just get rid of the woke, then everything will be fixed. And the reality is that's almost the least important part. I get that it's the more exciting part to talk about. And I get that a lot of this stuff is not particularly sexy to talk about. But the reality is that is just a piece. And and frankly, it is a small piece. You have to solve distribution. That is the number one most important, biggest problem whatsoever to American Western comics. And the proof is in, like, look at manga, look at a lot of these, I mean, look at the YA novels, look at the Babysitter Club, look at, I always bring that one up, but I mean, like, go to your Target or Walmart, go to the book area, and just look at the aisles, and and if you are at all observant and honest, you will immediately see the problem. The problem is that manga and YA and some of this stuff is beating the shit out of Western comics in these areas. That is the problem. And by the way, if you're uh, if people, you know, push back against me all the time, it's like, well, you got to fix the woke writing and then you fix the distribution. No, quite frankly, the opposite. And it's it's simply from this reason. There are good comics, legitimately good comics written by good people who that are either not selling well or have been canceled a long time ago because yeah, there's just, they, they can't figure out what to do. There's no distribution there. And, and so if, you know, yes, the writing needs to improve. Yes. The comics have to start treating their properties with more respect. 
if you're going to hope to have kind of better comics, you definitely have to fix that problem. But if you fix that problem and you don't fix distribution and you don't fix the money situation and you don't fix the marketing, it doesn't fucking matter. And I, as much as I hate to say it, because I wish this wasn't true, if you fix the distribution, if you get comics more places, if you get the marketing worked out, you can put out absolute shit and you will make more money than you do today. The business will be healthier. And my proof of that is simply like, look around at fast food. Nobody in their right minds, and I know some of you like to fuck around with it, nobody in their right minds wants to go to Arby's. You do not want to go there. The food is awful. The burger is terrible. It's not actual meat. I get it. Oh, the curly fries are good. Sure. It's hard to fuck up curly fries. You know, but even there, I, I wouldn't trust it. There's always, you know, get these news stories. Somebody found a finger inside of an Arby sandwich. Yeah, no shit. It's probably the healthiest sandwich they produced in a year. But nobody wants to go to Arby's. But there's Arby's everywhere. So Arby's is putting out substandard, shitty food and are still successful because they figured out distribution. They've got, I mean, because there's always going to be somebody who is either tired, drunk, or high. This could be like, I know I shouldn't eat this because I, you know, I'm taking my life in my hands, but fuck it. I'll have some Arby's. That is smarter than what comics are doing. Arby's is smarter than Marvel and DC. Marvel and DC continue to go down the path of limited distribution to the bookstores and all in on the LCS. And you're, you're, you're talking to a guy. I mean, you're listening to a guy who started his first comic shop in 1991. All right. So my comic shop, I have not opened one up and uh, I closed it right before COVID. So 2019, I had an unbroken run of nearly 30 years running comic shops. And I will tell you that distribution, delivery, all that stuff is king. And as much as I love comics and I love the local comic shop and I am deep, like, Friends I would die for, like truly brothers, blood brothers in arms who run other comic shops, people who, you know, if, if I get a call and I have, so like, hey, I need some help up here in Jersey. I'm getting on a flight within 24 hours, going to Jersey and I'm helping out. Dear friends, all that said, comics cannot survive. Western comics cannot survive and thrive if it's only the LCS. It cannot. I love these guys like brothers. It is absolutely death if that is the only outlet for comics. You have to go bigger. You have to go wider. It is 100% clear. So if we're going to learn from manga, you, you have to do all the steps. Manga didn't just wake up one day and was powerful. Manga had a distribution strategy. It had a delivery strategy. It had an anthology strategy. And it had a digital strategy. It did all those things. There are many steps in that. Step one, you know, get content onto a digital platform. Step two, expand that content. Put, you know, pricing incentives in the hands of the creators. You know, appeal to the fans. You've got to do all of those things. You can't just wake up one morning and copy manga. You've actually got to wake up one morning and go through the same 50 steps it took for manga to be popular. Manga had troubles, like deep troubles in the early 90s. Mid-90s, 2003, 2011, manga had major, major issues. And they worked hard to get past that and to deliver a, a clear value prop. And you know, now they're doing great. Western comics have to go through the same process. It is critical that they take the exact same path, do the exact same steps, and, and make it work. If they don't, eh. You know, you can't just leap to the finish line. You have to actually do the work. It's why, you know, like many of you have either gone through college or going through college and everything else. If you are trying to get a job that requires a college degree, you can't just forge your degree and say, I've graduated and be done. You actually have to go through the steps. There's character building. There's skill building. There's all these different things. And, and bear in mind, a lot of this stuff is boring as shit. It's way easier to say, stop being woke and you'll be successful. But that is, that is child talk. That is the kind of stuff that, you know, my older daughter, who's 13 now and just brilliant and wonderful, and she's going to start dating soon. And I'm going to fucking hate every second of that. But 
That's the kind of stuff she would say when she was four. She grew out of that by the time she was seven. So for all the comic commentary, no, getting rid of the woke shit is, is not the solution. It may be one piece of it, but it is not, it is not even the most important piece. The most important piece is dull and boring as hell. It is literally the hard work. No, nobody, nobody is successful without hard work. Sure, you can inherit money. Sure, you can be a lucky bastard, but you're not going to be successful unless you put in the sweat, blood, and tears. And whether you're a comics pro, whether you're a comics fan, whether you're a YouTube creator, whether whoever you might be, if you don't put in the work, fuck off. You're not going to get anywhere. That is what comics are all about. That's what they need to be about. And uh, quite frankly, 2024 is going to be a badass year because we're going to open up that publishing arm. We're going to do some things that's going to be the culmination of a lot of hard, boring ass work. Fuck knows, I would love, love if it was just about don't be woke. God damn it, that would be so much easier. Do you realize how much money I would make if that was it? But I'm not looking for, you know, cheesy YouTube ad money to, you know, look like a dumb asshole. I'm looking for an actual business. That's what investment's like. Anyway, we'll make it work. Hey, thanks for all the support this year. Fuck yeah. I hope you have a great 2024. Uh, all the people who are good to me, who, uh, you know, were, were good friends, who challenged. Certainly, I don't, I don't want anybody to just take my opinion. I like it when you challenge me. I like it when you come up with different ideas and, and push and try and make things better. That's you, you guys are true friends. Thank you very much. You're my brothers and sisters. And uh, for everybody else who's trying to make it easy, man, good luck. But, you know, maybe, maybe work harder. Thanks for listening.